committee meeting is Thursday, June 8th. This meeting and all other meetings of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statutes so that the citizenry may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. We have four of our five members present. One of the four is Zooming the meeting. Do you like a motion to review and approve the agenda if there are no changes, Casey? Are there any changes? There's no changes. It looks good. Okay. Yes, I move to approve. Dick Rowan made the motion to approve. Fred Zog seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Minutes of previous meeting of May 25th, 2023. Are there any changes or corrections? No? Okay, then I need a motion to approve. So moved. I'll second it. Got a motion by Jim Nagar, second by Dick Rowan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Public comment? Anything you've heard, Casey? Nothing going no. on? Okay. Okay, let's uh, review and approve payment vouchers. All right. Payment batch register. I've just got one of them here today, dated May 26, 2023. Um, first one we're going to talk about exceeding $1,000 is airing equipment exchange for $1,120.01. That was for capital acquisition 125T, which is purchasing a water pump. Get it? Um, fix, fix one of our voters. The next one is Enos Flint. They sell us our yellow paint and our white paint for painting the roads. We initially charge it to our stock account, and this bill was for $55,374. Babbitt Cat had a bill for $3,316.28 charged to the PTF, the stock account, and Unit 91T, and also Unit 717 and 1027. Fastenal had a bill for $1,525.36, billed back to all accounts. Folks Brothers had a bill for $8,656.39 which was for purchasing gravel, charged to county section two, a county highway Q construction project, a little bit to a stock account. And then we also did work in the town of Fremont and the town of Farmington. Flint Hills Resources sells us tack oil, charged to a stock account for $3,234.01. GFL Environmental takes care of our garbage collection. That was for $2,059.21. That gets billed back to our buildings and grounds account, and then the state pays the other half of that. Granger had a bill for $2,219.72 charged to buildings and grounds, and then capital acquisition, which are vehicles number 60, number 740, medical, which is fringe benefit, and then the town of Dayton. Medical is more or less just restocking our... Uh, um, band-aids and our gauze bandages and the first aid kits in the in the vehicles um, in this case it was for poison ivy towelettes so that time of year we provide towelettes for our employees in case they get poison ivy on it they can put that on it hopefully it reduces the burn do you have neosporum in all those kits too i don't know if I, there's I neosporum. That all the time i think i got a burned ear but i'm just telling you there's nothing like it for making stuff heal yeah. if you get a nick or a cut the next day you'll have, it'll be there. I can put a Band-Aid on, I cut myself bad in Canada. Yeah. Clean the fish, put that Neosporin, I cut the Band-Aid on two days, you can't believe what it does. Kills the bad bacteria, keeps the good stuff to help you. Right. Yeah. Let it bleed, I don't use dirty water, I don't trust tap waters, I let it bleed and then I put it on. Yep. Green Bay Highway Products had a bill for $12,837.80, charged to County Highway Q, County S, work that we performed in the town of Mukwa, Town of Lebanon and Caledonia. Pretty much it was all for culvert pipes. Lakeland Automotive had an invoice for all accounts for $3,707.07. And then it also was a portion of the costs were billed back to unit number 60, uh, squad number 56, unit 740, unit 21, another squad P85. MCC sold us gravel. Um, for $4,706.29, which then got billed back out to the town of Mukwa, our stock account in Section 1. 
Mid-State Tree Service had a bill for stump removal for $3,250. We charged that to section one. Um, the first day that they came in, I think they ground up 54 stumps, landscaped it, made it look good. And then they came in the, the, the second day and finished it. I mean, and was it on E? Oh boy. Okay, never mind. It was, it was, if it was charged to section one, it probably was down on County Highway U. We had a big tree cutting project down there and a pine plantation. And then we cut some big ones in people's front yards that we felt it was relevant to make it look nice. So I would assume Highway U. Is there any reason we don't have a stump grinder? Um, we don't use it that much for its cost. It's cheaper to build it out. I don't know. That's what yeah. I'm asking. Yeah. And it's relatively cheap to hire a contractor to do it. They're expensive. Um, Northeast Asphalt had a bill for $19,058.24. We billed that back to our County Highway S project. Um, what we're doing on County Highway S is we're having Northeast Asphalt as they um, are coming back from their plant, they're bringing gravel into S and they're stockpiling it up in front of, uh, um, in one of Donnie Cole's trucking's parking lots and they're stockpiling it in front of the Marion sale barn. So we have big stockpiles of gravel getting ready for the County Highway S project. So that's where this, this stuff's getting charged to. We haven't quite charged it to S yet, but we're going to. Um, that's where it's gonna ultimately be charged to. We're just delaying the invoice on it, but we're making our payment at least to Northeast. As far as the next one, we've got Pumps Tire for $3,951.52 charged to our stock account for tires. Sherl had an invoice for $2,329.86 charged to our stock account in unit P49. South said Southside Tire Company Incorporated had a bill for $1,149. Build to units 127T and 126T. And Stump Ford had a bill for $1,046.37. And they were all for um, squad cars, of which one was a damage claim. Not quite sure what the damage claim was on it, but it's for unit P56. Um, U.S. Lubricants had an invoice for $3,822.27. Build back to a bunch of vehicles, 741, 742, 51, 52, 53, and 59. Westwood Professional Services had an invoice for engineering services for double O's right-of-way acquisition and for designing the, the remaining amount for the double O or for O box culverts, which um, we got both of them replaced now. So them are big check the box projects to be done with. That was for $12,252.43. Wisconsin Kenworth had an invoice for $8,570.38, charged to a stock account, and then units 36, 74, and 77. Zables uh, by New London sold us um, surveying lath stakes, so we are stocked up for that for $1,300. We bill that just to section two. Sarnath Brushworks had a bill for $2,726.70 for broom refills for our sweepers for replacing the brooms that wear out. And American Asphalt sold us blacktop, cold mix, and recycled asphalt for $73,841.94. The cold mix gets charged to restocking our patchy mix in Wapaka and Helvetia. The recycled asphalt got used on section two and three, where we did some work up on County Highway G between Scandinavia and Iola, put the shoulders down, that black worked good, the black recycled mm -hmm. mix. And then we did some wedging on County Trunk Highway Q, which got charged to the Highway Q project. So the, the total for this entire payment batch registered is $244,000. Sorry, $244,444.20. Questions from anybody? Oh, fours. Okay, I need a motion to approve $244,000. I move to approve $244.20. Got a motion from Fred Zog. Second. A second from Jim Nygaard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Great. Um,
Agenda item number two, we're asking for permission just to bid out the following items. The first one is cutting edges, which are for our bow blades, the um, carbide blades, along with the cushion mounts, which are the outside ones for hidden curb, and then also for greater cutting edge, edge blades. We're also asking permission to bid out propane for our Helvetia shop, and then also bulk liquid, our calcium chloride, and then snow fence. And the snow fence is something that we try to upgrade every year, but we never did it last year. So we missed an entire year of getting 30, 40 bundles in here. I don't know for sure how many bundles we need. Mark would know that number. We had a significant order about four years ago, and it really upgraded our snow fence. So I just need permission from the committee to send them bid items out. We just need one motion for all that? or One, need one motion for all of them. Okay, I need a motion. Um, to prove bidding, cutting edges, propane, help issue shop, calcium chloride, and snow fence. I make a motion to approve bidding those listed items. Second. I got a motion by Jim Nygaard. First motion and a second by Fred Zog. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. A discussion on 2024 budget items. All right. So for the budget items, um, this, this go around or this early in the budget season, um, Chris and I felt it was important to at least make you, can continually make you aware of where we're going with a lot of things. There's no um, review and approve for today. It's just making you aware of where we're at. So um, Chris, if you wanted to start or I'll, you can start it and then I'm gonna jump in when it comes to the equipment purchasing. Just two things I just want to mention before we talk about actual budget items. One is that the auditors were here um, last week for the county. It's a routine thing. They come in every year. Um, they did have some questioning about our approval process for our paying, paying of the bills. Um, that might be something we need to take a closer look at, but there's no major concerns of anything that's going on. So that's all good. And then the second thing, a couple of us had already heard the draft report from that business opportunities analysis that the finance department had done. I think, Joe, you were there and maybe Lee was there um, and Casey and I attended it as well. Um, the draft report indicates that there could be some structure changes and maybe some changes with the software programs that the county is using countywide, but that is in draft form yet, no formal Decisions have been made yet, but that's forthcoming. So just be ready to hear more on that when that's ready. Uh, they do have quite an aggressive timeline on how they want to accomplish these things, but we'll see how that all pans out. But nothing really related to the budget, just wanted you guys to be aware that was going on. Um, and then as Casey mentioned, this time of year is when we start putting things together for the budget. Um, I don't have any real numbers to present at this time. I'll have some things in the July meeting, but to get to the July meeting, I need us to go over a few bigger items now so I can have numbers in place. So the first thing that we look at is the five-year plan, capital improvement plan, which you guys have been seeing uh, routinely. Um, we tweaked it a little bit. The first thing that I do when I do the budget is scroll down to the bottom of this wherever it is. And this italicized line here is numbers that I got from what Heidi publishes with her um, annual report and um, what she projects out for five-year tax levy. So this is the number that we try and hit with our um, project. So in 2023, it's looking like we're $431,000 over. Um, next year is 718,000. So we're probably gonna have to make some adjustments of some sort along the way. Um, if you look up above where we lay out all of the projects, back up to the top, there really isn't a whole lot of room to be switching things around because we kind of plan to do preliminary engineering one year right away the uh, next year or maybe two years down the line and then the actual project a year or two after that. So switching all that stuff around isn't really going to help us. It's just going to prolong the inevitable. So I'm going to go with these numbers unless you guys feel differently, and we may have to make some drastic cuts as we move on, but that's what I'm using as my guiding factor for that. Um, Being over in 2023, we already talked about it. Uh, I took it to the finance director, finding what uh, avenue is the best to take, and more or less, we're going to wait until October to see what we're actually over instead of what we're projecting over. Um, just so that she's got a better feeling of where we're at actually versus our projections of being over. 
and our highway e paving project that's going on right now is going to really dial us into where where we're going to be more accurately. Right. A, a lot of the changes were due to the increased wages at the beginning of the year, and then our agreement to increase equipment rates thirty one percent over the state rate. So that's kind of what changed a lot of those estimates from the when we originally made the budget. So, and, and crushing concrete on County Highway S. Yes. So that kind of changed a little bit, but we'll keep a close eye on that and see what we need to do. But anyway, I, for moving forward, I'm just going to use these numbers. Um, it's nothing final until October when the budget actually goes, but I need something to work with. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to work with for now. So I don't know if you want me to delve a little bit more into um, 2023, which is kind of what we already talked about. You're comfortable with this case. Yes. Yeah. That's all I care. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because I approached the finance director saying we have a healthy enterprise fund. She's like, yeah, maybe you don't want to use that. Maybe we'll just go after general funds funds instead of using the enterprise it. fund. So and she's comfortable <clears> with it. The so money's out there to accept overruns for 2023. So this is uh, just a quick look at what we tentatively have planned for 2024. And there you see that we're over the 718,000, but. Oh, yeah, sure. That's where I have room for adjustment next year stuff. And so when we come into this fall and we project where we're going to be at with it, Greg is probably going to have higher numbers than that also, because he helps me do the estimating. You're okay. So then I'll just have to cut the second man asphalt on some of them projects, which is what we've always done. We've given us something to cut. So. Okay. But for the budget budgeting purposes, um, for budgeting purposes, that's what I'm going to use going forward. For now, it may need to change. Um, for 2024, 24, I have to make some. Seven hundred some thousand. We have some large capital purchases. This is just the projects. Just the projects. The one thing that we haven't done yet is go through the ELRIP process. So this fall, I can apply for reimbursements for 2024 projects yet. Yep. I just don't exactly. have that to show you on here. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be aggressive with a Chai D application on the one that's labeled in green. It's not green here. It's this one, Mountain Lake. So go to, if you go to the, oh, the five-year five -year five -year capital plan. improvement plan for the year 2024, <laughs> scroll up to the one I highlighted in green. Right there, County Highway O, Mountain Lake. So that's an eight hundred sixty-two thousand dollar project. I'm going to apply Chai D funds, which I have labeled over to the right towards that project, which will be another revenue source to help cover those expenses that year. It won't be that full seven hundred thousand, but it'll go a long ways yeah. toward it. Though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's the tentative plan for now, moving forward. So just so you're aware, that's the numbers I'm using. I need to make some changes as we progress through the budget process. Um, additionally, with the budget process, we also have to take a quick review of potential personnel changes. So just based on years of service, I'm estimating there may be six, eight people that are possibly going to be leaving us in the coming year. Nothing official. No one has said anything to me. I, I just have to make a guess. We have to throw a budget number out there for compensating retirement. Right. And that estimated payout for those six retirees is about $125,000. That goes into our fringe benefit calculation for 2025. So we'll recoup that money. It's just, I need to put it in the budget numbers. Um, we don't anticipate any new positions or any extended leaves of absence. And we're currently considering one reclassification. There's going to be some paperwork to do for that. And that'll be turned over to HR for approval August First, I think I said was the deadline for that. So that one is possibly coming along. Yep, I want to reclassify our custodian position here. The skill set level of the gentleman we have here matches or exceeds the same job description that's over at the courthouse with them custodians. But I want to put them at. I want. I want them to have the same job classification because right now the stuff that our skill, the skills that our guy is performing is way beyond what we've ever had before. So this is an opportunity to move that, the lowest paid position in our highway department into another county facilities. We already have the position in the county. And with seven employees over there, we maintaining two buildings and one maintaining four buildings here. It's like, we gotta make the change or we're, we're not doing justice on what we need to do. It's fair, it's fair. Moving our, moving our custodian into the same job description, which is maintenance technician as the courthouse maintenance guys. I didn't get permission to do that last time. 
Sorry to jump through all the necessary yep. hoops and hopefully. Yeah, through the HR process. Yeah. Um, we currently have no request for technology, office automation, or furniture or equipment. That's one thing I need to address through the budget. And then the last thing is to talk about equipment and capital purchases. But before we go into that, I just did a really super quick analysis of where we're at with our buildings and grounds expenses and where we're at with that excess revenue that we talked about. So the 13% that we added to equipment for the buildings and grounds allocation is just a little bit short of where we're where I'm estimating we're at right now. Seven thousand dollars short. That's yeah. pretty close it's compared in the to how many hundreds of thousands we were right. out a few years ago. And, yeah. and that will change throughout the year, but that's just a ballpark of where we're at. And about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars for equipment purchases, which was that extra eighteen percent. So that's just kind of where we stand right now. I'll have some more firm numbers at the July meeting of where we're at, but just wanted to throw that out there. So halfway throughout the year, we've got a profit in excess equipment of two hundred thirty-three thousand or whatever number you just said. Last year, we ended with a loss in equipment of like 118,000. So we're only halfway done with the year. So the 18% is a huge this part. This is just excess. This has nothing to do with equipment operations. This is just that excess revenue. Okay. So it has nothing to do with profit loss of equipment. No. No, this is just that what that 18% is generating. So where were we at last year, ballpark, at the end of the year? And it's, did we take a loss? No. We no. did on equipment, but not on the excess revenue. That was... Okay. Number. I'll have to look. I'll have that for next meeting. It's positive. Yes. Um, but keep in mind, this changes as the year goes along. I just, I didn't analyze any of the information. I just took what was there and whatever. So just to kind of give us a snapshot of where we're at. Um, the key thing is to keep our equipment moving to help that increase. So that was all I had to say on the budget. But the next thing was the equipment capital purchases that you were going to yeah. expect. By so you've got the equipment purchases plan in place. And the big takeaway from what our five-year capital improvement plan is, is we're projecting to spend $1.8 million a year to maintain our equipment fleet, just to maintain what we've got. So in five years, $1.8 million, we're anticipating and spending $9 million over the next five years just to maintain our fleet. When you look at our book value of our equipment, it's about $10 million right now of the entire fleet. That just shows maybe how old our equipment is or still is, or it shows what the price of the new equipment is going to be. And there's such an array of, hey, for five, for the next five years, the county wants to spend $9 million on equipment, but their entire book value is $10 million of everything they got. That's just in a weird way of looking at things these days. That's tough, but is what it is. So what I want to do is just kind of give you a brief overview of what we're looking at in 2024 through quad uh, axle dump trucks. Um, no, even last ones came out of Green Bay, right? International. Yeah. Are we going to bid that with Midstate out of Marshfield Plover also? International it functions through them also. So when we bid through, talk to them like when I was yeah. there, and he said he could not get our people in the past ever to look at. International till we switched on our own. Our eyes paying twenty thousand dollars more for the Kensworth. I don't know that. Yeah, he said, and it's pretty hard to recuperate twenty grand difference. I mean, I don't know that. I'm just one of the things he threw at me, and I want two people aware of. But I don't know the difference in them. I'm not a truck guy. Uh, part of the reason was the the frame, the strong signal. I knew that changed. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's and now it changed that we like the international setup better than the other one. So when it dives into a, a poor market and things are bad, Kenworth will design municipal type plow frames to try to make some money and sell their equipment. But when the market is doing really, really well, they're just going to focus on the private industry and they won't focus on the municipal department. So that's why they aren't building those types of frames because they're doing real well and making money. Same guy told me that story too. And you know what, what I heard... In the past, as we didn't do much with Midstate ever, first we didn't have the truck, but we were concerned. Well, they're handling all the Northwest counties. Yeah. And Green Bay is handling the other. So I just, I, I would like to get some competition on Friday. Go ahead, Fred. Are those uh, figures uh, realistic in today's economy? Uh, whatever millions you spend in the next year? Um, Yes, we've got budgeted. Yep. 
Right now we're looking at a quad, really one, one quad axle dump truck is right now $442,000. So we've projected a 5% increase. So you can see in the five-year capital plan, we're still purchasing just two quad axle dump trucks every year, but the price of it's going up and up and up and up. The $1.8 million, exactly. the $1.8 million that we've projected to budget is the reason why we increased our rates so much is to re to get to that 1.8 million. So if I don't spend 1.8 million, have a year, we ever, have, go ahead. Have we ever gotten any feedback from uh, that meeting with finance uh, a while back about the uh, uh, future of purchases and stuff? The only thing I have coming up with finance is the ARPA. Uh, there's a finance meeting next week where I have to give a presentation on behalf of my ARPA request. And in this five-year plan, three pieces of equipment could get taken out of our purchase um, request if they are awarded to us through ARPA funds. Yes, sir. They are in 2025, if we could scroll to 2025, or which one's the greater? Is that 2024? 20, Go back up to 24. Where's the greater? So there is a greater, just for a greater, it's $498,000. So that's a half a million dollars that if ARPA, if ARPA can really, really help us out with that, so that I don't take it out of my enterprise fund, nor do I spend that 1.8 million. And the enterprise fund grows, which will help us for the replacement of the Larrabee shop in seven years. The next one is- so The ARPA money is already there. You don't have to negotiate it. Correct. It's, I just need approval right. to be awarded. Yeah. The next one. So make sure you fight for that. The next one is um, the street sweeper. So, in relation to ARPA requests, which year do I have the streets? 2026. 2026. 27. VAC truck. So, in 2027, I have a VAC truck. That's $471,000. I'll never recover the costs on that because we just don't run that thing year round. But that's just the price of that pieces of the equipment. So if I can get something that we know we're not going to recover and paid for by ARPA funds, well, then that's a win for us. The other but, one. But that back truck will ever be utilized in townships. Farmington comes and cleans all the all chip stuff or, you know, I don't I don't know that it's folks that does it from what I can. Folks comes in with their Elgin street sweeper and sweeps okay. for them, yeah. And they do a good job. So I don't know if we'll do it, but right now our. How many other townships do that? I don't know, not a lot, but we we get hired to to, to sweep for Embarrass in the King area and all of our curb and gutter. What about, what about Dayton? I'm assuming they got trips all over around those lakes. People is somebody doing that? They would hire us to do that, but okay. the the truck that we uh, we want to get isn't like Falks's truck that spins it into their hopper. Ours actually helps suck it up as well. So and it can drive like a pickup truck versus a three tired rotating street sweeper, which makes it a little bit more versatile. The other one is the wheeled uh, excavator, which is in 2026 for 404,000. So we, between the wheeled excavator, the road grader and the vac truck, that's our $1.5 million of ARPA requests that really will help us purchase That'll really help our, our $9 million over the next well, they, never pay for they won't pay. Well, the grader should pay for itself, right. um, especially the newest one. We can keep that one busy with a plow route and grading during the, during the um, summer months. What I wanted just to kind of talk a little bit about is what is the equipment that we're asking for going to replace? And so just a quick, quick scenario in 2024, by getting Two new quad axles. We're going to sell unit number 1128. That's a 1996 Ford plow truck. So, you know, that, that's going to be a 28-year-old truck. And the other one's unit 1163. 1163 is a 1997. So that'll be a 27-year-old. A, a are those truck. our oldest ones? Uh, the 90s. Mid-90s are our oldest. 28, Yep. And then as we move down into what else we're looking to sell, um, we'll talk about 2024. 2024, we've got um, a foreman's truck we want to replace. That would be uh, Rick Stibbs, our signed foreman. We'd add a fifth wheel hitch to it. We'd sell number 20, which is the one that we're using to pull the mower around right now with. Superintendent's truck, that'd be Greg Flores. Unit number four would get sold. 
You're looking at also expanding our brine at the Helvetia shop in 2024. So in that line item where it says miscellaneous, I have $74,000 that would be absorbed through that Helvetia brine tank expansion. We don't know exactly what that's going to cost until we bid that out. Next is the year 2025. We at the bottom, more importantly for this group, is I have a miscellaneous of, um, amount of $277,000. That would help cover the costs of repairing and sealing the Helvetia parking lot. The Helvetia shop parking lot is falling apart on us, and we need to do some major repairs out there to keep the asphalt together. It's been paved, and then it's been wedged, and then it's been chip sealed, and we're starting to see even the chip sealing blow apart. So a lot of that miscellaneous would get absorbed into that one. In 2026, we've got $440,000 allocated. Um, that would help us with another truck, possibly, if we get help from the wheel excavator. Otherwise, the Wapaka brine, the, um, we look at expanding our brine operations here. And in 2027, I've got $297,000 of miscellaneous. If that, if that amount um, um, isn't allocated, it surely is going to get absorbed in another piece of equipment. And then 2028, We've got 323,000. I mean, we're looking five years out. We don't know what things are gonna cost then. So we're still trying to spend that 1.8 million annually on equipment, which isn't just equipment. It's also the investments we make at our shops gets, has to get thrown into this category. Or major repairs. Or major repairs that we just can't expect yet. So capital improvement stuff is looking at spending 1.8 million over the next five years of which if we can get help from ARPA funds, that will help us a lot. That's just, I don't need all approval on any of it yet. I just wanted to bring up the idea of, of where we're at. Supervisor's report. I was at the conference and I didn't get out of this one as much as they do. Um, but I'm gonna say this, Heard a real great presentation on the benefits of eradication of invasive vegetation, improved sight vision, and improve access and safety. And I was put on, I was most impressed with what Dodge County was doing. Also, I was impressed with what was happening in, in St. Croix County. And I guess what was unique about it is the fact that they're not doing a lot of cutting in the spring excuse me, in the, in, the, in the spring. And what they're doing is they're spraying to get rid of parsnips and some of the crap that's out there. And after two years of it, they were showing pictures of how it's gone and that the milkweeds were coming back and the monarch egg larva or whatever you wanna say was fantastic. And, and they had good pictures showing one, one side of the road that was done and the other side of the road that wasn't. So they did some studies. I think the most unique thing I picked up, they said, whoever your sprayers are, you want people that are really going to hold on this. You don't want to just have somebody doing it because it's his job. And the other thing is to make sure that they're certified. And it isn't hard to get them certified because they care about it and should want to do it. I don't know what we have here, Casey. I'm not digging and throwing stones. We may have all that. And the other unique thing is with your salt brine tanks, which we have, you have the equipment. You just got to change the hoses and nozzles. Now, you also said we have a spraying truck Two of them. already. Yeah. So we have it. Now, I guess what was interesting was the in 2022, let's see where some notes, Dodge County sprayed. May 4th and finished May 18th. They did 7.5 days of spraying and it was due to weather. And when wind is over 12 miles an hour, you don't spray because you got too much drift okay. at all. In, in 2023, um, their spraying started April 25th and ended May 4th. And they did it in 6.5 work days. And so when they were comparing, they were showing cost comparisons. Um, they were getting rid of a lot of stuff that wasn't coming back. And they were saving money by not cutting. And what they also said, when they cut this, the, the time they're cutting now is in the fall. And when they were doing that, um, 
um, they were able to cut it five or six miles an hour rather than three or four because of all the weeds and everything in the road ditch. Now, I don't know enough about this, but I'm just thinking that if we've got people that are going to own this, we should be involved with what's going on in Dodge County, what's going on in St. Croix. Um, you can't be an expert on everything, and I don't want to be. But I just think it's interesting. I'm sure Jim knows a lot about that stuff because he's in that business. But I guess you can save money, but you can make everything a lot better. And you know, at first I thought, what am I into here? But I think it's a, a burn from some deep frying fish. I, I think I got spattered and it showed up later. Sure. You know, but I mean, you just wonder. I know I was looking at Pat's arm this morning. He's into some poison oak. You know, it's there's and parsnips is really bad. You've seen the burns, and they showed the burns that you got from it. People don't realize how much parsnips is in the road ditches and all over, and it's it's taken over. And that's why maybe we need to look at that a little more. So that was where I'm at, and we'll talk about that again. Um, I don't know if any of you guys were in on that session on that pesticide one. I was there by de default because I didn't like the other one, and I'm glad I went to it, just so you know. So that's the biggie that I would... What I think we really doesn't sound like a lot, seven and a half days in the spring or six and a half in the spring. But it, what, it, what it showed in the pictures of what it accomplished was unbelievable. So, and I know we do county spraying and we do uh, state. state. And some towns call us in to spray too. You know, and we got four certified survey or sprayers right now. Are they gung ho into it? Are they? Is that you know what I'm saying? Is that their cup of tea? Like your greater man on a greater, you know what I mean? I guess that's my big thing. Yeah. Is that to get into this, you want somebody that really is proud of what he is going to do and do it right, and not just go through it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they emphasize very much. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, that's that's my big report. Okay. Well. Uh, uh, what what was kind of made for a kind of a just an informational thing that wasn't a whole lot of information was the one report on the budget because today is the day that there's discussions going on in Madison and the meeting was Tuesday so uh, he there was a lot of proposed stuff and it looks like probably things status quo at least will stay the same and we're open for more but on the money end of it it was just uh, just the timing of it was wasn't too much information to offer. Uh, just what I heard anecdotally about the, the floodplain and shoreland zoning uh, that there was offered uh, clarification on that and uh, that uh, county adoption of it is all over the board and that the DOT itself has exempted themselves from uh, having to go through that process because of the variation in the county uh, interpretation of it in our county is one of a, a small handful that is uh, more aggressive in pursuing this. So it was a good conference. Well, no, after today, what money is there? I guess that's what yep. I'm saying. That's the truth. It, uh, <clears throat> it, Fred, you won't like to hear this, but we didn't get any money from Tommy Thompson on until Evers got in in our DOT to, to do a lot of improvement. And I'll tell you, our roads show it. I don't care what anybody says. And the money's there. I can't say enough good things about Craig Thompson because I was here before he got in there. And now we're seeing stuff happening. I don't know how you feel about that, Casey. I agree. It's aggressive right now. We're seeing funds that we've never seen before. There was there was a good proposal from a comment from the floor. Somebody from Portage County said, uh, "With this bridge replacement, let's let's see if we can't get from twenty feet down to 10. And I thought, "Amen to that." So hopefully, uh, the right person heard that and will we'll, uh, do something. We're good. Anything else you want to say, Casey? Before? I've got the commissioner's report just to rattle through here. Okay, your next agenda item. Well, your next agenda item should be personnel. Oh, yeah. Personnel, I've got um, one seasonal employee that's going to be joining us next week. Um, that would make about six, six, six seasonal employees we have. 
And then and then the, today is the last day of Brett Zilke's day. All right. So, so we'll back to five. Are, are back you to five. seasonal employees into the grass cutting stuff and the ditches and that? Or? Uh flagging. No, the okay. the two seasonals that we do have are older gentlemen and they're the ones that are mowing. Yeah. But our, our sprayers are our full-time staff. And we've been spraying for, for three weeks now. Um, going through the commissioner's report, finance committee meets June 14th, county boards June 20th, and then I have a highway committee meeting on here June 22nd, but my opinion is June 22nd should get moved to June 29th. That's my opinion. It'll help a lot with the um, bids that we're going to be receiving for the um, um, cutting edges propane because they won't be back in time for all of that. So. Right now, I'm looking at moving the highway committee meeting to June 29th, if that makes sense with all of us right here. So, and then, and then we would not have it July 6th, which is the week of 4th of July. We would have it the following uh, July. Well, we'd move it to July 20th. So, we're looking at having a meeting June 22nd and a meeting July 20th. June 29th. Yeah, 29th. 29th. June 29th and July 20th. So we're going to have three weeks between each one. Thereabouts. Oh, that's about right. Yeah. It's June 29th and then July 20th. That's three weeks. Yeah. Right. That's a long time. I'm okay with the 29th. Why don't we want the 13th? I won't have any of the June budget numbers together by then. Well, I don't want to get in. I'll go along with it, but I don't want to get into the three week stuff. I don't want to start spreading that out too far. Okay. And we probably, I might take off the week of 4th of July, so I won't have much to talk okay. about the 13th. So that, that's kind of what's going on. It's okay. the and people not being. You can add that in there, fine. But then let's get back into our two week cycle. So, the, so I'm putting down the 29th, and I'm saying then the 20th. All right. Have we heard any, you know, and I know that we heard any more on the mitigation bank credits. Yes. Are they approved? They're not approved yet. No. Okay, that's pretty cool. The next thing I have for committee involvement is um, Human Resources Committee. We posted for an equipment operator one, and the same applicants that applied the first time are the same ones that applied again. So you're not getting anyone from the outside. And we were shopping for applicants from see who's out there, and no one's even applying. So when you're not even getting an applicant from the outside, it shows you that we're not competitive with our wages. So we did it. I, I don't know if they hired anybody last night on the DHHS. It was, I am. It was a meeting at four last night, and they're going to re repost for that position. Yeah, you know, I said that way up front. We should, you know, in the meeting. I just was there, and I heard what the each committee said, and we had four applicants. They narrowed it down to two. I don't know how how it ended up, but I heard one had pulled out, and it was down to one. I don't know if they're putting enough wages out there to get people to apply. The way you get people to switch jobs is that's how they make salary increases. So I don't know what was posted out there, but I'm just saying, hey, you're in the same boat. If, if we're posting at 22 or 24 dollars an hour, and they go down the road and get 28 or 29 because of their CDL, they're not going to apply. That's how you get salary increases by changing jobs. You don't get them by going in and taking two and four percent. Mm -hmm. so, we're definitely not going to attract any equipment operator ones at twenty two dollars an hour because they're going to the rate is that the starting rate about twenty two bucks an hour. Then they're going to take a wage. Most of them are going to take a decline in their pay just to come here. That isn't going to happen either. So anyway, before yeah. Act Ten, there were a lot of benefits. That's why people came. The yeah. benefits are gone. Well, the thing is, if with in this situation, what I'm concerned about, the applicants we're getting might be people that are are getting reprimanded from a different job and are have have got some warnings and and uh, you know said, hey, you don't do any better, you're you're on the jobs on the line here, and then 
they're the ones that are looking. What are you going to do two years out from now when you have those six to eight employees that are going to retire that you're not sure of? I tried getting an increase above step one and my HR department said, no, deal with it. So there it is. How do I maintain, maintain and even take on additional townships when I can't been, hire anyone? I've been in that school business a long time. I can tell you how it works. I used to have a hundred applicants for a teaching position. There are no teachers out there now. Everybody's short all over and that's back 10 killed it all. So promote from within, grow within your organization, and hope you retain the ones you've got. That's what we have to focus on, because we know that outside there isn't no one else willing to come in here. No. With 70 employees, and you're expected to provide a public service at a high skill set level when you want a guy to come in and build a road for you, and you, you interview him, and they're a Pepsi driver. Pepsi delivery person. Well, you, it's hard to make a Pepsi delivery de delivery person into all of a sudden a road builder or a skilled grader man. Not gonna happen. It's not going to happen. A lot of those single axle trucks like that are just under CDL too. So they, they do have some experience, but it's not the same kind of truck. Yeah. <laughs> Nor the commitment of plowing snow. On weekends and holidays and after hours and all that stuff. They don't want to do that crap. They don't have to do it and get paid different. So it is what it is. The advantage you do have is that four day work week. That's the advantage. The four day work week. And another advantage, and I got to brag about it, we have nice equipment and we have to continue having nice equipment because who's going to want to work here with 1992 trucks? They're going to leave their 19 or their 2015 truck at another job to come drive a 1992 plow truck here. And a 1935 shop. Yeah, well, fuck that <laughs> helped. We have a nice facility. A lot. Yeah, it's it's wages, it's culture, it's equipment, it's 40 work weeks. It all helps. Um, I can't fix it for you, buddy. I'm sorry. Moving into the. Um, the other, other items were PACA operations in our shop, buildings and grounds, still waiting on for those new, two new truck chassis to show up. Um, mowers are pretty much, we got both of them ready to go now. So there's two, we need four all in all, but right now we've got two that are ready to go. So if you haven't seen us mowing a lot, that may coincide with the Dodge County thing by accident, sure. that they're not mowing in the spring, but. They we're still getting set up for Boeing. I guess what was unique about the Dodge County thing is they really researched when the spraying had to happen. Because that's when they could kill those weeds. And they had to do it two years in a row because they call them biannual. Is that what you call them? That's what the parsnip is. It's a two-year year. And that's plant. how they could. And there were a lot yeah. of other things in there. And I didn't write all the names on what they said that they were taken out. But it was amazing that their road ditches looked like grass that grew slow. And so that's why the only reason they needed to cut in the fall, they didn't have to cut after that. It was, you know, it, it you know, and, and but there was a there's a certain window they had to be in. They said this is real important. They went over that. In my experience, too, as far as spraying brush, uh, I have better results when the, the leaves are fairly young. Buckthorn is kind of a shiny, glossy leaf, and uh, it takes kind of some extra, a little bit of crop oil or diesel fuel or something in the spray to help that uh, damage that leaf a little bit so that the chemical gets in because a lot of it just runs off. But when it's young and lush and still kind of tender, it does seem like the, the chemical is absorbed into the plant better and it does a better job. Do they call that a surfactant? Or like yes, adding, a surfactant. Surfactant, right? Like adding to initial, it helps the poison yeah. stick to the leaf. Yep. Or, or sometimes they use a little liquid nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, and sometimes I just put in a cup or two of diesel fuel. It just uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not as nice to work with, but something about it it just helps, helps kill it. The, the biggest complaint was the asparagus pickers, but so it be. Yeah, there's there, there's towns that don't spray spray get their asparagus. Sir. I'm an asparagus guy too. I did send an email out to the town of Iola regarding not going into a service agreement. I did not get a response back. So 
Cards around the field. Yeah, got to do it. Yep. Yeah. Um, as far as our construction projects, we're plowing away on every project. All seems to be at the same time. Highway N is shouldered and paved. Highway O south of Triple O is now paved and shouldered. Highway E um, should be finished probably Monday if everything goes well with the paving portion of it, which lines us up for the HRRP Northeast Asphalt to come in and grind in the rumble strips here right after the 4th of July. So that's a good feeling. We broke ground on County Highway N now, which is that section from Clark to T. Um, crews are moving earth over there. And County S and Q are just waiting on Mashuda contractors to come in and crush for us, which were on their schedule. They should, they're still about three weeks out. So you won't see much movement on Q or S up by Marion until Mashuda comes and crushes. When they come, they're going to come within a flurry, load themselves, crush themselves, and try to produce an inch and about an inch and a quarter spec product for our mm -hmm. gravel base. So if you don't see nothing on Q for wells for that reason. As far as the wetland mitigation bank project, um, I have a construction plan that I need to provide a construction cost estimate for. Greg and Hank and I are doing that this afternoon. And then that will be part of McMahon's final submittal. Um, we've got permission to dig out some ditch plugs out there and replace some ditches with culvert pipes um, to help the whole site drain better to get the water out of there, which helps us up for constructing the site. So Stuart just helped us get permission on getting that done from the core and the DNR. And um, but there's a lot to be done out there once we get approval. On that. Yes, yeah, a lot. You got to put a fence up. You got to do a bunch of fence. He wants us to mow sooner than later, and I don't want to mow until it's as dry as it possibly can be. And right. now, I mean, it's as dry as it maybe possibly could be. But yet, we still haven't gotten to, to the hot months of July, which might even help us out more. Then we're going to spray come here the first week in August with a drone sprayer. That's about $17,000 to spray that whole site. So. Will our mitigation credits be approved by then? We're just keeping it's like a big hole in the ground. We're just pouring money in it. And, I, and I'm not dragging my feet, but I'm just saying that Yeah, I don't want to get so far in that all at once we get another setback for a year or two because yeah. you're taking out of your other pocket to pay for this. Right. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah, it's. Uh, it would be nice to get <laughs> have some commitment from their end. I don't know what how what can be done to speed it up. I can share the emails that says that he's going to submit it to the Corps of Engineers if you want to see that. But he's I keep saying he's going to submit, submit, submit. He never sends it. That Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. Anything else? we would have would be moving into the budget reports for the commissioner's report. Um, we've got uh, where we're at with service agreements. This is what we're gonna change. Right now we say we're gonna, we budgeted for $555,070 of revenue. We're already at $773,000. So that's where we're gonna get rid of materials um, and just use labor equipment. And it's not included that either. So right now, all of our customers, the way the old service agreements are written, would have already satisfied it, and they would, we wouldn't have to hire them for any. They wouldn't have to hire us for anything more. That's not right. So I, that's what we're changing for with our new service agreements coming up. Um, as far as money spent from our municipalities that we don't have service agreements with, we've budgeted for a hundred and well, we don't budget for anything. Everything we do is just extra. We're actually above last year by fifteen thousand. Overall, we're 400, we've doubled where we were at last year at this year as far as revenue, comparing apples to apples, but we had a, a lot of snow plowing in the spring, whereas last year we did. The other budget report we have to show is where we're at financially. So way off to the right, we've got 38% of our budget remaining for maintenance, not construction, but for just maintaining. A lot of that's going to be uh, built up when we do our chip sealing projects. So. Going up to, where is their seal coating? $270,000 we're doing in August. So a lot of that will get chewed up there. And then the rest of our maintenance is going to be snow plowing this fall, of which we overran quite a bit this spring. So might have to ask Heidi for some help on that, which we've done in the past. If you have a real, real hard winter um, and you overspend your budget, 
you go to the finance committee and you ask for them to to make you whole for that allocated amount. So winter snow, oh, that's fine. I'm sure a lot of the townships are in the same boat. Every township, every county in the state's in the same boat. This is breaking our capital project. So far, we've spent 61% of our maintenance on top. And then as we scroll down to the bottom, we've spent 36% of our construction budget. 21%. Uh, we spent 21% of our construction stuff, 36 of it overall. Highway E is not in there yet. And that's where we are looking up at the fourth project down of $1.1 million, $1,113,000. Pretty much all that's getting spent last week and this week. So we can spend roughly one fifth of our budget in in a week and a half. So when are they going to be done paving? Highway? Monday. I don't think they'll finish it today. I've been gone Canada and all over. So I've been up that way. All I haven't gone that way either. So yeah, they're paving out there today. Um, Are they paving tomorrow too? No, we're not going to work Friday. You don't have to. I didn't know where you were on all that. No. If we start working overtime, just kind of projecting workload versus time wise, Fridays don't seem to be in. Uh, we don't need Fridays right now. We're we're good stretch it out a little bit. No, I agree with you, but I mean, I didn't know where you were at on that stuff. I feel confident that we'll get it done this summer. And then I think we're going to have a slow October, honestly especially since our cruise started and the only thing that's going to be a lot going on at one time is when we start highway S by the Marion body works and, and at the same time, but they're just plugging away on end right now to stay busy until they're going to give us any work in October. There's no money there either. Well, we're doing well. I mean, we've, we're aggressive. We had a brilliant May as far as weather wise yeah. and, the, and we've got a lot done. Usually it's rainy in May. So that can kind of concludes our uh, agenda six. Next, we'll go to the Wapaka River Wetland Mitigation Site for a site tour I'll drive. And then we'll convene back here at the shop and that'll be the end of the committee meeting today. Okay. okay. Fred, we're going to leave you. You there, Fred? Yes, sir. All right. That kind of concludes where we're at for the uh, initial part. Now we're going to go for a... Uh, a ride out to the wetland mitigation.